Okay, bringing shit back with Burner Man stage. Though we're not going right into it, going into the shop. This game, like, like a lot of the later Mega Man games, gives you a lot of upgrades to buy. From an extra life, which is the one on the left. Through the energy balance, spike guards, and so on. The spike guards cause single use, they will protect you from dying on the spikes, but they'll only do it once. Communication system lets roll help you out, um, mostly just tells you enemy weaknesses or similar. Not really necessary for me right now. This one's an interesting one, it basically leaves um, almost like caches of weaponry for you to use, but it's a one-off thing. So we're not going to be buying any of that first. What we're grabbing is the energy weapon, sorry, energy balance. This is the standard Mega Man power-up that lets you restore energy to your special weapons even when you don't have them equipped. Automatically goes to the lowest one. And that's all. As you def defeat, as you finish more and more levels, it unlocks obviously more un abilities as you can see right there by the massive amount of blank spaces. Some of them are only for one character or the other, but really makes no big difference. So we're going to Burner Man's stage. Because Burner Man, of course, being fire aligned and looking like a bad zero ripoff with a pair of gasoline tanks strapped to him, is of course weak to ice. So, you know, logic being that we should go and fuck him up with the ice weapon now that we've got it. His level, however, is mostly not very fiery at all. We have rocket launching robots, we have owl bots, we have rocket launching robots whose heads stick around and continue to fight even after you've nuked the body. Um, they're bastards like this. Especially since because this is a Mega Man game, you go back far enough, it respawns the enemies. And that big cheesy shit-eating grin on the bastard's face does not make it any less, or any more, um, tolerable, I should say, because frankly, fuck those guys. Anyway, no fire thus far in this level. There's actually very little fire in this level whatsoever. And here we're introduced to the right shield enemies. They're a pa minor pain in the ass. You've just got to wait for them to throw their shield out of the way, which they will do either when they're jumping or when they're throwing grenades at you, which you didn't see in that little thing. Those little blocks there hide basically gaps sometimes. This particular opponent is a giant gorilla who throws shit at you. Um, he's weak to the ice weapon, you can basically just drop it on him and one or two hits will finish him. As you saw there, that was actually two hits because the ice weapon rebounds off walls. So, yeah, I mean, aside from being a King Kong ripoff, there's not much to say. And this is the main reason you want the ice weapons for this level, is that you can really avoid the most annoying bastard enemies in this particular stage simply by having access to it. They can take quite a few hits to bring down normally. But if you drop a giant block of ice on the head, they kind of keel over and die immediately. It's very effective in that respect. We're going up ladders. we got a giant screaming clown face with rockets strapped to it and what appear to be reindeer horns. Seriously, if I ever see Father Christmas is slaving and pulled by that thing, I'm putting it down to a bad acid trip. Okay, I should probably put down seeing Father Christmas' sleigh down to a bad acid trip, but you never know. Because really, what the fuck? But he drops screws, so it's all good. And they're not really going to... There's a CD in there. And there's gaps in those floors, so fuck to find out how to do it. I'm using the ice brick there to kill that thing because it's a two-part enemy. And you need to take them both out at once if you want to get rid of them permanently. If you take out just one right there, the other one regrows its partner. Again, you can get that CD there. That's what the spike guard is basically helpful for. I'm not using it right now. I'm not going for CD collections in this one. Because there's 100 CDs and they can't actually all be collected by one character. Several of them are single character only. Now, the giant ape of annoyance has graduated to throwing rubber balls instead of rocks. I'm not sure if that really counts as graduating, but... As you really see there, if you can set it up right, the ice wall can just do a number on crowded enemies. It's very effective for that. Now this guy throws spiked mines, however there's one particularly large weakness if you can get into position. That. He can't actually hit you if you're down in that corner and you can just shoot him full of regular bullets till he dies. 
Now we get a bit of a different section. I'm going to go grab the energy from under here, even though I don't strictly need it. Um, a whole bunch of spears poking out of the wall, ready to sodomize Mega Man. That's pretty much it. Oh, impale. It's only the ground ones that are uh, threatening to sodomize you. If Mega Man indeed can be sodomized, this is not a philosophical question I particularly feel like answering. And yeah, lots of spears. Sliding under most of them is the way to go. Um, except, of course, for the airborne ones, because you can't slide under them. This is a significantly easier section with Mega Man than it is with base, because base does not have the slide ability. You see me ignoring the CD there. I could get it, but I'm not actually aiming to get any of the CDs. And you see those birds. Again, this is one of those situations where you see a section of level that was designed specifically to be easier for one particular character. Base, of course, has directional shots, so that's a much easier area for him. And now we come to the real meat of the area, and the first time you see the fire theme. Um, see that giant eyeball thing that drops napalm? You get one initial hit off that, and then you need to get to the high ground, because that wall of flame that comes up afterwards is an instant kill. The only way to be safe from it is either take out the turrets fast enough that you can leap up onto the top safely, or leap up onto the top and exploit the fact that there's a slight gap between the turrets and the edge of the platform that you can stand on and survive with. And I repeat again, those flames are instant kills, so if you are knocked back down into them, or you're a tad too slow getting up on the platform, goodbye. And we're up to the boss already, so this is a shorter video than I actually kind of heard. Poor Dragon is not a threat in the least. Um, I don't even know if he has any attacks, he just sort of stands there and gets the shit kicked out of him. Anyway, here's Burner Man. And you'll notice that there are spikes on the edge of... or well, both edges of the stage. Okay. You see me just checking my weaponry right there. Um, Burner Man is weak to... fire effect. Sorry, to ice effectively. He has several attack patterns. He tries to blowtorch you. He will leap around. Fortunately, you can exploit him in this situation. There's a bit of a loop there where if you can shove him into the spikes, when he reappears, he has a slight um, opening window where you can hit him again and launch him back into there. If you time it exactly right, you can just combo him out of the game entirely, which is necessary because he's a complete bastard. It looked easy, but if you let him actually get his attacks in, you realize two problems. One, he's invulnerable throughout most of his attacks. Two, he was designed to be fought with base, so a lot of his stuff is exceedingly difficult to dodge with Mega Man. Luckily, the bastard's dead. I had the wave burner, and we're going to go fuck up Pirate Man next. Pirate Man, of course, is weak to fire. I don't know why. That's just the ordering this game has chosen. So I'll see you next time when we're going to take the flamethrower of doom and go burn ourselves a pirate.